All right, coaches, uh, welcome. Second session of the day today. Uh, Pumped, man. This uh, Coach Longan's been on my bucket list for a long time. Heard him speak many a time. One day we will get you over to Canada. We'll make that long flight and uh, we'll do it right. The guy's got a resume as long as I am tall, uh, and we've picked shooting for him to discuss today. He's going to do that in a four-phase approach. So, Coach, appreciate you being on. Appreciate the time difference and everything that uh, you did to get prepared for this one. And we'll give you the floor here. So take it away. Thanks, Tanner. And, and thanks for all the terrific work that, uh, that you do in, in supporting coaches and, and this great concept through Golden Ticket Sports. Um, always great to, to share the game. And, um, you know, I certainly have got a strong respect for all things basketball in Canada. Um, a lot of close friends over there. So great to spend some time with, with you and the coaches. Um, as Tanner said, you were going to talk about shooting uh, and, and we're going to do it from uh, a four phase approach. Uh, I think shooting is, is the master skill. Um, you know, it, it's, if you can't shoot in the modern game, you, you, you can't play. You know, we, in times gone by, you could have that elite screener and uh, elite passer and, and the I guess what we would call a garbage guy that does all the little things and, and that's still really important, but you need to be able to shoot the ball or at least be a threat to shoot the ball, particularly the way modern offense is, is played. Um, you know, we spend a, a disproportionate amount of time in our programs on, on shooting. Uh, I'm a firm believer that at the youth level, a third of your total practice time should be devoted to shooting, whether that's finishing, uh, adaptive shooting, form shooting, or, or using this four-phase approach that we're going to talk to today. Um, it's just such an important skill. Um, and I always encourage coaches to embark on and, and stay on a journey of discovery about shooting. Um, you can never be a good enough teacher um, of, of shooting. Um, and that's the ultimate thing that you can provide your players. If you can improve, improve their shooting consistency, their, their repeatability, uh, their self-coachability, uh, their accuracy, their range, <clears throat> you know, you've done a great job as, as a coach. Uh, some ways to do that, how do you get better teaching shooting? Well, you got to watch great shooters and see what their commonality is. You, you know, we, we're fortunate now in, in the game to have some really elite shooters um you know obviously steph curry and, and clay thompson come to mind in, in terms of how well they shoot shoot the ball but you know whether that's nba wnba high level collegiate basketball euro league or other pro basketball um we've never had the quality of of shooters that we have now in the modern game so you know, if you want to learn from someone learn from a master watch them see what the common points are and blend that into your overall philosophy. We're big on, on asking questions of players and engaging in what we call guided discovery. Um, and again, while we said we want to learn from the Clay Thompson's, the, the Steph Curry's, the Diana Taurasi's of this world, we also want to learn from our players. And just by asking them questions, particularly in an individual small group workout, you know, what would you do in this situation as a player to get your shot off? You know, how do you approach shooting? What, what resonates with you as an athlete, as a player uh, in regards to shooting? Uh, and they'll tell you the truth because they want to win uh, and they want to get better. And so anytime you can engage them and, and get data from them, uh, it, it's, really, it's really valuable for you as a coach, particularly as a youth coach. Um, Invest learning time in shooting before system. And what I mean by that is, you know, if there's a choice between practicing that fourth out of bounds play um, or that, uh, you know, fifth special situation late clock play uh, or getting some shots up in a worthwhile environment, there's no choice. <laughs> um, you know, you, you've got to invest uh, time in shooting in practice. You've got to invest time in shooting in reviewing that um, from games and practice. You've got to review and learn and develop your 
package in terms of um, teaching and drilling shooting, right? And we know from all levels that history's shown that shooting's the great equaliser. Um, you know, if you watch the NCAA tournament, you know, you see it consistently, you know, the Cinderella stories that where a small school beats a power five school because they can shoot the three um, because they've been able to step in consistently and knock down shots. So, you know, it's particularly if you're a coach at a smaller program, maybe less athletic kids, maybe a smaller group of, of uh, players to choose from, you know, shooting should be your God that you pray to every day. It, it's got that opportunity to, to be a great equaliser for you and your program. So what do we mean by the four phases in developing shooting? Well, for years, um, you know, we've spoken about form, repetition and situational. Um, <clears throat> so can we get them really sound in their technique? Uh, can they repeat that technique? And can they self-coach? Can they self-correct? And we'll talk about all these things as we move forward. Repetition is, a, is an obvious one. Um, consistently we talk about see the ball go through the net you know the power of that visualization just seeing the ball consistently go through the net uh, <clears throat> building success through success really important and then situational um, you know so things that are going to happen in the game and, and we know now from a lot of research and, and, and coach development that we have to practice more things that actually happen in a game so shooting off movement, shooting off cuts, uh, shooting off screens, shooting in position, things that actually we want to happen in the game, we better make sure that we're practicing. The fourth element or in this list, it's the first, but the other element that we've added in, in recent times is kinetics. So, you know, while we talk about form and repetition situational, what are the young players doing with their body? How do they move? How do they create energy? How do they create the shooting motion consistently? Um, and, you know, we had uh, a great influence from uh, uh, the Elite Athletes Program in Belgium, where they spent a lot of time linking the kinetic chain and what people are doing with their body with basketball skills. Um, and after spending some time there and then doing some research, uh, you know, we added this element that, that we used to have three phases. Um, now we certainly spend a lot of time on linking how the body moves and how it, it links with the rest of the, the developing shooting. <clears throat> so what does that mean? Well, the shooting action, doesn't matter what player that you watch, you know, who your favourite shooter of all time is, it, it's a fluid action. You know, and it's all about linking the kinetic chain. So creating energy off the floor, through the body to that fine motor skill at the end where we want to we want to release and follow through. Right? And too often we don't give young athletes the tools physically. We don't give them the anatomic anatomic references that they need to succeed. And often we can make shooting very rigid. Uh, and confusing by giving too much information about where our elbow is, where our hand is, where our knee, and it becomes a very convoluted, confusing, rigid environment for young athletes where we're trying to create the exact opposite. We want a dynamic, fluid approach where athletes can just create really positive energy through their kinetic chain to the ball, to the basket. Um, so, you know, we, we are now spending a lot of time on, on this area and, and with good results of players of all ages, you know, down to, you know, nine and 10 year olds right through to our, our elite players. Um, so it's important for young players to understand the energy systems uh, involved in, in shooting. Um, you know, you need to talk to them, you need to show them, you need to do drills and warm up activities strength and conditioning activities that really give them a strong understanding of that creation of energy off the floor, not through the floor, to the ball and that fine motor skill at the end. 
we try and teach it initially, of course, without the make or miss element. Um, you know, if you're trying to impact, um, if you're trying to impact young players and, and how they move, um, you know, if you've got make or miss element at the end, um, you know, they're not going to buy in as much. You know, um, you know, get them to move naturally, get them to develop a real confidence with that creation of energy off the floor without the stress of the basketball, without, without that competitive element of, God, you know, I have to make this shot. <clears throat> Can they move, um, you know, without the ball and execute what you want them to do through their kinetic chain um, first, and then we add the ball. Um, if you look at, you know, the great JJ Redick, his ability to shoot, you know, as he's been able to, to make his way through a 17 year old, 17 year pro career, the key thing's been his body. He's done a great job with his body. Uh, he's done a great job with what we call shooting agility um, and, and spends a lot of time, you know, just moving and, and rehearsing those movements rather than just standing there getting five, six, 700 makes up as, as we did in the past. So maybe as, a, as one point, sacrifice that you know we're always talking about we need to get makes we've got to get shots up we've got to get our 300 up we've got to get our 500 up um you know maybe take that down and, and devote a little bit of that just to developing that that body movement mechanics and that that really fluid kinetic chain uh, we speak about our foot pattern consistently we ask the players what's your natural foot pattern what would you do with your foot pattern in this environment um, and if it's sound, we build on that rather than correct all the time. We want flexibility through the hips. And you can only do that through worthwhile strength conditioning, worthwhile Pilates, you know, flexibility and agility practice away from basketball. Um, as much as we can, particularly if we're going to, to spend a lot of time shooting in a practice, we, we want shooting functional movement in the warm up. You know, so we want, as the athletes warm up, rather than just run in straight lines and do high knees and do karaoke and all, all those things that they, they do, can you include an element of cutting and, and inside foot, footwork, flare footwork, curl footwork, just the body movements that they're going to do? They're still achieving what you want them to achieve. They're getting warm. They're getting the blood flow up but they're also getting some more rehearsal about developing that kinetic chain through the jump shot. And I think this is a big one, and this is what the elite programs do. You need to talk to your strength staff. If you're fortunate enough to have a strength staff or a, you know, an S&C coach in your environment, uh, or you know players are, are working out with, with a, you know, an athletic trainer, talk to them about this area. You know, shooting's the master skill. We've spoken about that. Shooting's an area we want to impact as much as we can. Well, you know, it takes a village uh, to raise a, raise a shooter. So, you know, in the gym, I'm not going to tell those experts what to do, but I am going to engage them in conversation and say, hey, this is what we're trying to achieve to improve our shooters. How can you help? Um, and we've seen great results with that. Um, by just engaging in that, that conversation. So the next phase is form or, or technique, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, really important. Um, you know, form needs to be linked to the shooting action, not isolated from the shooting action. You know, we don't spend a lot of time um, with the traditional one hand uh, shooting action, um, you know, while we want to isolate the parts and make sure that we're working on, we don't want to separate them. Uh, I think too often um, what we do in the form shooting session is turn players into robots. We can't say on one hand that we want a fluid action, right, and we want to create energy off the floor and then spend every practice part thereof making it a very mechanical, methodical approach. You, you, you really, it's counterintuitive to what you want to do. So in the form, you certainly want to teach the parts. You know, 
the the grip on the ball you know hand positioning the 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 set point um you know stance energy just all those things but as much as you can to our point about fluid action try and link them rather than separate them um i think one of the biggest errors in in teaching shooting is in form where we don't incorporate any rhythm again it's too mechanical and shooting is not a mechanical action so you know we're really big on creating energy off the floor making sure that the, the, the shot's dynamic even in that controlled form environment so be a bit creative um, you know challenge yourself to be a more intuitive coach and teacher of, of the skill um, and and vary vary your form shooting um, in a previous program um, we would chart form shooting um, and the reason we did that is we just felt the players didn't engage in it very well and we didn't think they valued the form shooting so we we didn't tell them but we we charted it over over three weeks we'd we'd do our eight minutes of form shooting every day uh and you know pretty decent players were averaging you know 60 shooting 60 percent in the form <clears throat> you think well 60 percent is not bad that was 60 percent in form shooting one two meters from the from the basket and it wasn't a skill error it was a value error they were bored senseless that we would put eight minutes on the clock and we would go through the old collegiate style one hand then add the guide hand now get a knee it, it it was boring um and you know no one learns when it's not stimulating let alone you know youth youth basketball players or, or even senior pro basketball players so you know, make sure that it's not mechanic and it's not boring. Um, you, you need to be a bit creative. Uh, incorporate some balance. We spend a lot of time um, with that. That, again, links to the kinetics. So, you know, a balanced shooter is going to be a good shooter. Um, and remember, this form shooting doesn't have to be just one metre from the basket. Yes, we, we all value that getting make, seeing the ball going through the net, you know, demanding all switches, all, all those things, you know, to the great Rick Pitino uh, line. He wants all shots, all net, all the time, um, you know, and, and it speaks to focus. But, you know, very rarely do we shoot a jump shot one metre from the basket. In, in fact, I, you know, if you, you watch five games and you would be lucky to see two jump shots one meter from the basket why are we spending six eight minutes a day you know practicing that so while we don't want them out there blasting from three you know we certainly want to you know move around so they're two to three meters from the basket while they can you can still control and isolate those elements but it's a more realistic game-like um, environment Repetition, this is the one area that, that coaches, you know, do well traditionally. Um, you know, everyone understands the, the, the need to get uh, a lot of shots up and, and to shoot uh, in volume. Uh, and it certainly still has, has merit. But one thing that we're learning through, you know, better teaching methodology and better understanding of how, how people learn, how people develop, is simply getting a volume of shots up is not enough um, and often it can be counterintuitive um, so the repetition phase should be more than just simply getting makes um, you, you want to still make sure you're balancing the technique uh, and correction with that volume uh, it's no good working through the phases getting to repetition rolling the balls out and allowing you know mistakes to be practiced consistently and and you not having an impact and making sure that you're coaching in sound bites and 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 helping the, the players um, one of our really experienced coaches um, and one of the great teachers of the game in the australian coaching ranks bill tomlinson um, speaks about limiting his players he coaches at a university program in china 
um, limit their time on the shooting gun. You know, the Dr. Dish and, and those machines, you said they're great, but he limits their players to, to 10 or 15 minutes uh, on those rather than, than get on there for 40 minutes, you know, get your 600 makes. But it, it really, it's not a great use of time because it's not specific enough. It's not game-like enough. Um, you know, so it's a really great point. You know, we can get caught in, let's just get 500 up. You know, we need value in everything we do. We want to define the natural foot pattern in the repetition. You know, consistently ask your players, what, what would you do with your feet in this situation? So, you know, some shooters love to step in, you know, the, the traditional one, two step in. Some preferred to hop. Some will have a preference uh, on going uh, left foot, right foot, you know, which we call power foot environment here. Um, you know, some are really into the inside foot, so they want to run a curl route. Uh, other, other players, even on a curl route, they want to get their left foot down, right? So, as I said previously, as long as it's sound, I'm going to, I'm going to extrapolate that with the players. If I don't think it's sound, if I don't think it's something that's going to help them, I'm going to say that. But if I see that they've given it thought, I, I see them do it and I see it's got some merit, well, we're just going to work and layer and build on that. I think that term natural foot pattern is really, really important. I think at times, and I know I've been guilty of it, you know, we, we, you know, we define, no, your footwork has to be this. On this cut, it has to be this. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that's the game and I'm not sure that's really how you get the best out of athletes. Certainly not saying that athletes rule the roost, but you know what, they're the ones that are going to have to perform this pretty complex skill um, at a high level of pressure against high level athletes. I'm going to make sure they're part of the solution. Uh, touched on limit time on, on shooting machines and primarily because shooting is about movement, but it's about relationship you know, with the pass or the dribble. So if I stand there 500 times and the ball comes directly to my hands from a machine, that, that's not realistic. The, you know, at, even the elite passes, it's going to be at my shoulder or, or maybe it's going to be, you know, at my waist. So just make sure that you vary. If you've got those shooting guns, fantastic. They're a great tool, but that's what they are, a tool. Um, and I think it's really, really important that you strike that balance. In repetition, often we chart scores. So we keep statistics, you know, makes and misses, and, and we do it over a season and we know what, you know, little Johnny shot, um, you know, over the last six weeks. And, and that's really important. And, and, you know, we live in a data-driven society, but, but don't get married to that. Um, you know, I, I think that sometimes we can put too much emphasis on that data. Um, because really the, the only shots that matter are the ones in games. So, you know, I'm not too much in love with a, an athlete who shoots 72% in, in our form drills and, and our repetition drills and, and in his individual workouts uh, and then shoots 30% in the game. You know, there's got to be a correlation. So I think striking a balance between keeping that data and charting different scores, um, it's got to be in context. The last thing I would say in repetition is rather than just say, right, we're going to have to have this window of time in our practice, 10, 12, 15 minutes, we're going to you know, shoot, we're going to do all our volume drills. Vary it up a little bit. Start with, start with some shooting. You know, mid-practice, throw in another repetition-type drill and, of course, the value of, of doing it late when there's fatigue. Um, I think multiple short blocks in this phase is important. Um, you know, if you, if you read about or do any research with people like um, Chip England, the, the great shooting coach, your own Dave Love, um, you know, they do things in, in 20 minute blocks, um, you know, in the individual workouts. They're not going to do an hour of, of shooting. They're going to really make sure that they lock into some, some specifics um, rather than just, again, that mentality, let's get 500 up and, and go. It's about quality, certainly not quantity. <clears throat> Situational. Um, this, this is modern coaching, isn't it? 
you know, practicing things that that happen in a game. Um, you know, linking practice more closely with the game. Um, in Australia, we call that game sense or a games approach. Uh, I know that that from colleagues in Canada, you know, including the great Mike McKay, that that this is a big part of of your coaching ethos as well. It's something that perhaps doesn't always um, link in shooting. You know, we get so caught in caught up in the repetition that we f- we forget that we've got to link it to what's going to happen in a in a game of basketball. So, um, as we spoke about shooting off cuts, uh, shooting um, in an environment where there's movement, uh, and in the World Cup in in 2019, the Men's World Cup. One of our uh, terrific young assistants here at the Centre of Excellence, Michael Cassidy, did an analysis of of where the shots come from. Um, And over 55% of of all shots in the World Cup came from at least two metres of movement by the shooter prior to the catch. So think about that. More than half the shots in that tournament, which was an unbelievably high-level tournament, came from where the receiver, the shooter, had moved minimum two metres before they've gone into the shot. So that really impacted the way we here in Australia practice shooting. You know, if the data's saying this, we better be practising that, right? So I think we've spent a lot more time in this situational environment in the last 18 months, um, excluding COVID, unfortunately. But... um, because we realise we want to practice what happens in a game and we want to provide players with a tool um, that happens in a game. Use of adaptive shooting drills. You know, some people call them contested shooting drills. Um, I don't ever want to do a contested shooting drill. Um, And maybe I'm a dinosaur, but offensively, all we want to do is create open shots. We don't want to shoot contested shots. So I'm not going to roll out a drill. It's a contested shooting um, drill. But we do have to have a drill where there's game-like environments, i.e. defense, where there's situation of advantage or disadvantage. Um, You can't simply shoot on air and be a consistent shooter. It's really, really uh, important that that you have that adaptive shooting where, where there's impact on time and space. Our game's all about time and space. So if our offensive game's all about time and space, we want to practice skills in an environment where time and space is is impacted. Linked to shooting is shot selection, decision-making. You know, we we speak a lot about decision-making and and we do a lot of really terrific game sense, game approach drills on decision-making. Well... Shot selection is the ultimate decision on the floor. You know, shot pass drive is still the foundational decision on what we want to do. So um, make sure that that you don't just preach shot selection, you teach shot selection. There's a difference. You know, you consistently hear this, oh, we've got to get better shots. You know, hey, we're taking bad shots. Well, firstly, what does that mean to the players? And what have you done in your practice to, to, impact, to impact that? Um, I think that's a really, really important uh, element as well. Foot pattern and preparation specific to areas of the floor. Corner threes is a, is a, um, is a big one. Um, how often do players step out of bounds on the corner three now? Um, or they travel as they're trying to get into it. So more than ever, um, you need to define and help players explore and develop footwork in certain areas of the floor. Uh, The old days where you could step into every three-point shot, it's not possible now. You start stepping into that corner three and the big one, two, it's just not going to, it's just not going to work. Um, Again, we spoke about the ability to make shots on the move and you've got to teach and drill accordingly. Um, you know, the better the athletes, the better, the higher standard, the, the less open shots you're going to get. 
Um, so, if, you know, if you're going to expect players to make shots in that environment, um, really important that you're practicing it and you're doing drills that then enhance it. Um, adaptive foot pattern, we spoke a little bit about that, but, you know, if I'm brain dumping the, the, the foot pattern and the footwork that an elite shooter has to be able to do, <clears throat> first one's curl. Um, that's, that's a staple for any shooter. Can you get off that inside foot um, and get in your shot? Flares becoming even more popular now uh, and important. Fade, um, you know, the corner fade is really important. Can you get your feet underneath you quickly? The turnout, so floppy action. Um, and I'll show you a video here of, of perhaps our most elite shooter in Australia here in a sec. And the other thing is transition. We're shooting a lot more jump shots in transition. Um, are we practicing that or are we just preaching the tactic, uh, drilling the tactic, but not giving the specific situational teaching so players can have some success in that environment? Um, the picture there is of, of Chris Goulding who was in our World Cup team, has been part of our national team for a decade and is our elite shooter in our pro league here. Um, and I just thought I'd show you a quick clip um, of that. I hope it comes out okay in the, in the, in the Zoom, Tanner. Um, on, I think Chris embodies this four-phase approach. I, I think he's got great kinetic chain through his shot. Um, he's got a really strong technique. Uh, he moves without the ball and he's committed to, to getting a lot of shots up in practice. So um, I'll just share this. Uh, it's only a small video and then we'll, we'll wrap it up from there. I'm sorry about that. I'm having some problem with the share. It's saying it won't allow me to to share. So I'll send that video through to to Tanner, and he can he can share it with you all. My apologies for that. My yep. technology yeah. skills. Are no, no, no worries. Yeah, no worries, Lana. We'll uh, we'll post it here with the replay as well. So that's uh, that's my presentation, um, and. Uh, Again, just wanted to say thank you to, to Tanner and, and Golden Ticket Sports. Um, I love to, to share the game. Um, I'd encourage Tanner to send that presentation out to, to all the registered coaches and Tanner also share my um, social media stuff and, and email and more than happy to engage in the coaches uh, uh, any way I can. Perfect, uh, Coach. Awesome. Really, really appreciate you doing this. I'll fire off uh, with a question just to get things going. So I know one of the things, especially with high school coaches or uh, coaches in that kind of grade 8 to 12 range, you always are asking your players, well, can you get in the gym and get more shots up, right? Can you get in there and work on it in your own time? How much of that for you, Coach, is scripted and how much of that is player-led or what, what? You know, are you giving guys a plan to get into the gym? I guess, what are your thoughts? Well, <clears throat> like most things, Coach, it starts with questions. You know, okay, coach, they come in and say, Coach, I want to get in the gym. Can I get a key? Can I, can I come in at this time? Um, and, you know, you, usually the answer is going to be yes. But then, I'm gonna, then my question is, what, do you, what are you planning to do? You know, what are you going to do? And often the answer is, oh, we're going to get shots up. I want to learn from players as much as I want to learn from great coaches. So they're thinking, they're constantly thinking, they're going to make decisions, they're going to help each other out, they're going to work on time and spacing. I'm influencing the ball with what hip I want it to go to. All right, so it doesn't matter what way. So you shift the ball, I've got a hand here, keep shifting the ball five times, so I'm going to jab. So if they jab... All right, before I start, I'd like to uh,
I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. Finally, no, no worries. It was working now. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. Sorry. Huge apologies. Um, yeah. They say, I'm going to get shots up. You know, okay. What does that mean? What's that look like? You know, what sort of shots are you going to, you know, and not, not to, not to make an interrogation, but I want them to have a plan. Um, Adam K. Porn is our coach here at the center of excellence. Um, and he talks about having a simple plan for shooting. Um, you know, and, and so if I don't think players have got a simple plan, I'll make suggestions and say, hey, you know, why don't you get this? Why don't you look at this? Um, you know, I notice you, you need this. But if they, um, uh, if I think they've got a simple plan and they can verbalise that simple plan, you know, I, I'm going to allow them to, to, you know, drive it themselves. Sure. And then the follow-up to that coach is how much of, that time allocated to shooting here on an individual level is based on increasing players strengths or working on players weaknesses is there a balance do you find that there's a certain way to go about that yeah i, I think you probably want um uh, as one as to three on that so you know if you've identified a a weakness you know that would be the one um and working on the strengths would be the three because that's what players want to do you know, you, you need to trick them a little bit. If I say, hey, you need to work on this, 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 and this, you know, they're probably not going to do that, you know, but hey, you know, make sure you get this. You know, remember we spoke about this specific thing on that, that flare footwork. It'd be great if you could get some stuff on that. Uh, but hey, you know, we know that you're getting close with that transition three. So keep building on that. And um, you know, so I'd go one as to three. I, I think sometimes we we can get guilty of saying to players, oh, you need to do this and this is an area of weakness and you need to do this and you need to do this. And they don't want to hear that, you know. Right. And, you know, so I think you've, you've got to balance it one as to three. Sure. Okay. We got uh, questions coming in from our attendees here. So what are your thoughts on the mid-range game at the youth level? <clears throat> Um, it's a big, it's a big bone of contention here in, in Australia. We have, we've had a lot of coaches, you know, follow the analytics and follow the NBA game and say the mid range is, is dead, but I'm not one of those guys. I guess I'm a bit of a dinosaur. Um, so, uh, you know, I think it's important. We, we just had um, our under 18 national championships and the best offensive player there, um, young man by the name of Rory Hawke. Um, dominated in the mid game, you know, he, he, he consistently hit big pull-ups. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's important, you know, year for years, we've taught, you know, um, far mid close, you know, can you shoot the three? Have you got something in between? And then can you finish around the basket? I don't know why we would take a whole element out because some nerd at MIT said that it's not a good shot. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. Right. Awesome. Okay. Uh, next one here. So you mentioned uh, one third of practice time should be shooting at youth levels. What does that bre breakdown look like at a higher level with the college and pro in your opinion? Well, at the college and pro, they can get their shots outside of practice. You know, you've got assistance and, and you can get, get, you know, in San Antonio, they call it their, their vitamins. You know, they can get their vitamins every day by getting their shots and they're finishing up. Um, but I certainly wouldn't, as they go up, just hand it back to the players, you know, like I think players like shooting and they like shooting in practice. So youth level, definitely a third. Um, I don't think pro um, uh, coaches and, and, you know, even, you know, high level college coaches shoot the ball enough in practice. Uh, I think it's a bit of a cop out. I hear coaches say, oh, that's on the players. They've got to find, well, you know, you're the coach, you're, you're the leader of that. You're trying to manage that performance. So, you know, I'd, I'd probably still be doing 20% of total practice time, even at that level, if I had the chance. Right, perfect. Okay, uh, next one here. So with the national team, um, do you utilize any sort of competitive shooting ladder or anything like that? And if so, is there a process for moving up and down that ladder? No, not so much because obviously in that environment, it's, um, you know, camp based and players are all over the world. They certainly, um, you know, all our national teams chart, you know, 
their shooting. Um, and there wouldn't be a shooting drill that doesn't have uh, time score or target TST. Um, and I was I was at a um, uh, at one of our national team camps with our, our senior women recently and Sandy Brondello, the great coach of our national team, but also of the Phoenix Mercury. Um, you know, she starts every practice with with uh, adaptive shooting. So it shoots off, it shots off their sets. It's multiple basketballs. Big one for her is the coaches as passes. You know, they got coaches, managers, physios out there, rebound, you know, just so the players can just focus on on getting a lot of shots up. Um, but yeah, they certainly track it, but it, it's a different environment, I guess, than the, the day-to-day weekly grind of, of pro, the pro or college game. Right. Okay. Uh, so transitioning as shooting into finishing here. So finishing skills at the youth level, what is important to teach first and next and so on? Like what would be, would it be similar to what you outlined for shooting today, Pete? Yeah. Um, it, it pretty similar. You know, I, I think you've got to teach um, what you want them to do with their body. Um, you know, obviously footwork, you know, most, most young players around the basket, if they miss it's because of their feet or their eyes. You know, um, so you've got to be able to link those two. So, you know, what are they doing with their feet? Can they pivot? You know, that was one of the things we identified last week at our National Junior Championship is finishing was just impacted by the lack of creating an open window through the pivot. Um, but, yeah, so, I, I, you know, what are you doing with your body? What are you doing with your feet? You've got to constantly coach the eyes on offense. You know, what do they see? You've got to see what they see. You've got to ask what they see. You've got to, you've got to identify what they're looking at because that's where finishing, you know, is such a such an issue. Um, but I think too adaptive, you know, it, like the mic and drill, you know, I did a couple of workouts last week with one of our national team players and we started both sessions with the mic and drill. Um, but pretty soon you, you've got to put some constraint in, you know, the, the days are just shooting layups and finishes with, with, you know, no constraints. It just doesn't help. So, you know, we spend a lot of time with bump pads, you know, or, you know, Swiss balls, holding them, you know, up, all sorts of things there. Um, and, you know, that that's included in that 30% of total practice time is finishing. Cause if you want to impact your shot percentage, make your layups. Right. <laughs> yeah. That, that's a lot of, you're, you're going to move, your, you know, the three-point shot, you're going to move that needle about two percentage points um, at best any year. <laughs> but I tell you what, you can move your total, um, you know, shot percentage, you know, nine, 12 percent if kids make laps. <laughs> right. right. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. Uh, so currently in this part of the world here, we're not able to meet uh, as a group. What would you tell a younger group to focus on or work on at home uh, related to shooting when they're by themselves? Yeah, it's a difficult one, isn't it? And we've we've been trying to explore that over the, this terrible last 14, 15 months, haven't we? You know, um, I, I would just talk to them about um, the four phases. And, and you might not use that term, but, you know, say, so, hey, you need to practice what you're doing with your body and your feet, you know, um, you know, you need to spend a little bit of time where you're just really focusing in on your technique. Then spend some time having some fun. Just get shots up. Just, just get them up. You know, just, you know, get them up. Um, you know, we use that home court app, which I'm sure you guys use too. The kids love it. it, it you know, it, it's a sneaky way to get some more work into them. I think that they, they think they're having fun and, and we think they're getting better. So it's a great marriage. Um, but you're yeah, talking about the situational too, you know, help uh, put some bins out, you know, curl off some bins, get, you know, j- just explain to them your method. Now in player speak, don't, don't talk to them like they're a mini coach cause they're not, but just give them some tools and they'll be into it because it actually gives them some things to do. Coach, you, uh, as I said at the onset here, always on the bucket list for me to tune into and, and a guy who is such a great sharer and uh, willing to give up himself and his time. And, and I can't thank you enough, man. I really, really appreciate this. No, no, no problem. As I said, I know you do great work there. Um, huge respect for, for Canada basketball and, and everything that, that 
you do um, love to get over there once we can jump on planes again and and spend some some more time. But I appreciate the opportunity. And, and again, uh, if any of your coaches want to reach out, Twitter's a great platform to reach out. I think that's one of the great sharing uh, platforms for coaches. Um, but certainly give them my email, whatever you need. Um, and look forward to, to seeing you and, uh, and your coaches soon. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Uh, enjoy the uh, start of your day. All right. Thanks, mate. See you. Take care. Thanks.